Uh, right now it's Ryan Girdler, Christian Welsh. My name is Tony Squires and it's this man. Read about it. Read about it. Read his mail. All right, Reedy, what have you got for me? Well, we should start with Melbourne because Christian's obviously, obviously here. Yep. Uh, Ryan Pappenhausen. Now, Melbourne in talks with Ryan Pappenhausen about, about a contract extension. He's got one year left on his current deal mm -hmm. uh, with the club. He's obviously off at the moment, suffered that concussion a few weeks ago, and I believe they've used that time to try and advance those talks. Uh, it's my understanding Ryan will probably sign a three-year extension with Melbourne. They're no, not far away. It'll be in the next couple of weeks. Uh, as I said, he's got one more year, so that would take him through to the end of 2025. Talk is three years around the $2.4 million mark. Um, he could have got more if he went in the open market, but I think Ryan, uh, as I understand it, uh, obviously loves playing Melbourne and wanted the club to be... He didn't want to squeeze the club too much because he wants wants decent players around him. So I would expect that will be confirmed the next couple of weeks. Ryan Pappenhaus, a new deal at Melbourne till the end of 2025. Um, and obviously that has ramifications for Nico Hines, who's yep. at, at the club at the moment. Gee, he's going well. Isn't that he's... a refreshing approach? What's that? Didn't want to take too much yeah. in the salary yeah. cap because he wants good players around I know, him. and Pappenhausen's on the open market. He's a million-dollar player, yep. really. I, mean, Absolutely. He, I think he, he said he wanted the, the front rowers to get that <laughs> specifically. <laughs> um, <laughs> did they, Is that did, what you're hearing? Yeah, you're hearing that, Reedy, aren't you? I did. Yeah, I think good. that's what I heard. You're right, yeah. yeah that's front, great. Rowers, front rowers need a few more rewards, I think he said. Yeah. Uh, a bit more love for him. Is it when those stuff is going on, in the background, though, is do, do players kind of sidle up to each other and talk about that or not? Um, yeah, I think generally that you don't really talk financial terms, no. but um, yeah, yeah, I, I think that guys that you're close with, and obviously that's that's outstanding news if, if Pappy's going to be staying for a few more. Um, he, he's such a phenomenal player, and uh, you know, it's been such a, a rise for him. He was probably a third string fullback. He was tucked behind Scott Drinkwater for a bit there and really had to work hard. And that's what he's done. He's really studied the game, used Billy Slater. Um, and, and we've seen the player he is. He's one of the premier fullbacks in the game. And how is he going? How's he shaped with uh, the head knock? Yeah, I think perhaps uh, his first year in Melbourne, he actually got a bad knock and had some time out. So they're being very conservative, taking their time with him. So uh, I don't think he's really done much training at all. He's been getting into fish, um, fishing up there uh -huh. at Sunny Coast and um, catching a bit of... So, yeah, he's, he's having some downtime and kind of relaxing the mind, I think. All right. Okay, so what does that mean for Nick, Nico Hines, so, who has stepped oh, yeah. in and played beautifully? Now, Matt, Frank Panissi, I spoke to Frank last week, and Frank made it very clear Mel Melbourne want to keep Nico, but it looks increasingly difficult. It's probably not going to happen. Um, and it, it's a couple of issues. It's a money issue because Nico, every week every week he's play, he plays, his value goes up. Uh, the other issue is Nico wants to be a starter, and that opportunity isn't there in Melbourne, obviously with Ryan um, extending out. Now, I'm expecting Nico Hines to make a, a decision on his future in the next 10 days. Um, there's about a half a dozen club, clubs in for Nico Hines. Brisbane's obviously been well documented. They've upped their offer to Nico. They did that on Friday, I believe, an increased offer for, for Nico Hines. Um, you know, he's got some thinking to do, and as I said, in the next 10 days, I believe he's gone home for the weekend um, to the Central Coast. Um, to spend some time with his family. I'm sure he'll discuss it while he's there. And in the next week or two, we'll get a decision out of Nico Hines. And I think probably at the moment, uh, Brisbane are the favourites. But there's, uh, as I said, half a dozen clubs looking at Nico Hines at the moment. I expect Canberra to come at him now. The George Williams is gone. Um, St George has been linked with him. I think Cronulla. Uh, there's a handful of clubs that are keen on him. But Brisbane's probably the favourite at the moment. Right, as as doors open for Nico Hines, are they slightly closing for Anthony Milford? Well, it's interesting. You know, when the George Williams news broke um, earlier in the week, I believe Canberra approached about uh, Anthony Milford, whether they would be interested in bringing him back to the club. And uh, the answer was a polite no, thank you, but no thank you. Um, you know, we'd expect after his performance on Thursday night, I think obviously Tyson Gamble will come back, Anthony Milford will probably make way. And, you know, at the moment, uh, you know, I, I'm told there's some interest in him, but I just... You know, he's looking at an amazing drop in pay. I mean, he's a million dollars a year, Anthony Milford, and at the moment, every week he plays his value as opposed to a guy like Nico Hines. Anthony Milford's value drops, um, and the interest in him, I wouldn't say it's fevered at the moment. So, um, His you know, mind must be so cluttered with what's oh. going on because some of the things, just the inability to pass from point A to point B, yeah. is mind-boggling, really, some of those simple things because we know what genius that he does have. And I think that might be the best thing for him, Tony, just a, a, just a, a change, of, um, change of atmosphere, 
change of position, less pressure with less and, money, and, probably, and 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 change of salary. Yeah, and and I, I think you know, as funny as that sounds, for him to go somewhere, he's still only twenty six or twenty seven for half that amount of money without all the pressure, without going in to be the having to be the marquee player. He's a talented footballer. He's got so many natural attributes. That guy, if you put him in the right system, someone could really come in. Uh, get a really good bargain by there and, and get someone that could contribute uh, contribute to a really successful season. So, be some, you know, there'll be some smart money out there looking to snap up Anthony when he's, you know, when his price keeps dropping. Yeah, and I think it's going to be a frenzied month or so, Tony. Okay. The August, it's now an August one deadline, right? It's been yep. pushed back and we saw the, the Tommy Dearden, uh, Jay Clifford moves happened uh, today, being confirmed today. Uh, Tommy Dearden's gone to North Queensland. Jay Clifford's come to, uh, gone to Newcastle. And I, I believe Bris Brisbane are, have asked a question again about Billy Walters, potentially getting Billy Walters to, out of the West Tigers and to Brisbane yep. uh, so he can play under his dad. Um, they're still hopeful that that will happen before August 1. And there's another name I'm hearing is being, um, or a club has shown interest in, in him at the moment, is Dallin Wattins Lesniak. He's got another year in his deal at Canterbury. Um, he, it's been a funny old time there for him. He hasn't really found a home. You know, he went there as a fullback. hasn't really worked out. He's on big money there next year. And there's a, a rival clubs. Uh, I think they, they've they expressed an interest in Dallin. And I think Canterbury will have a decision to make there as to whether they decide to let him go or not. So um, I think the next month we're going to see a, a frenzy of activity on the player market. Oh, I love it. We love a player frenzy. We do indeed. And a lot of fans do. Once your team's out of contention, oh. all you've got to look forward to is next year and see what they're going to look like. It's amazing, Tony, because we get all our figures now. You see how many people read your stories and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And punters love player movement stories. You know, I know the players hate it, mm. hate reading all this speculation, but yeah. the fans love it. Wow. They can't it. get enough of it. Just give, and they, they, just give them what they want, Rudy. That's oh. all you're doing, isn't it? 